You are listening to The New Man, Beyond the Macho Jerk and the New Age Wimp. Your host is men's coach, Trip Lemire. Have you ever wanted something so badly that you screwed it up? Why do our efforts to get it right usually end up with us getting it wrong? And how does fear block our ability to be more energized, creative, and bold? Today, we're going to hear another excerpt from my new book, This Book Will Make You Dangerous. In this excerpt, you'll hear how I found myself in a cinematic coffee shop shootout and why I almost blew up my marriage before it ever got off the ground. Chapter 6. Be Playful. Minimize Risk and Create on Your Own Terms. All right, let's reconnect with those three fear-based questions that keep us in a prey mentality. What do I do so that I'm not uncomfortable? What do I do so that I don't risk losing something I care about? And what do I do so that I don't look like a bozo? We just explored our relationship to discomfort and tension. Now let's talk about our relationship to risk. For the sake of this conversation, let's be clear that real safety is very, very important, absolutely. However, we also want to keep in mind that our primitive brains aren't so great at discerning between real safety and a threat to our discomfort or self-image. This means that most of the time, we're playing it far safer than we need to. And strangely enough, it's our desire to avoid screwing up that often screws things up. Here's an example of how I almost torched my marriage before it even got off the ground. The Starbucks Shootout. Back in 2004, I was introduced to my wife, Allison. At that time, she lived in Colorado and I lived in Florida. Because she's weird, she would only communicate with me via email, but after playing that game for a few months, she finally figured out how to use a phone and one day we talked and talked and talked some more. We had an amazing conversation full of laughter and depth and more laughter. I realized two things after I got off the phone. One, I had to meet this gal face to face. And two, I knew she was going to be in my life forever, either as a friend or maybe something more. Now, here's where I pulled the boss move. And I tell you this now because it won't be long until you witness my fall from grace. I got bold and called her back and said I was going to book a flight to Colorado so that I could take her out to dinner. And a week or so later, I got off the plane met her at the restaurant, and we had a great first date. The energy was electric, the conversation effortless. We laughed and talked for hours, flowing between some of the most sacred elements of our spiritual beliefs right into grimy, profane gutter humor. This was my kind of gal. I was blown away, and as we made plans to spend more time together the following day, I heard a voice in my head saying, Don't screw this up, man. Still with me? Good. Cut to the next day, and we're driving around Boulder. It's freezing outside, but things between Allison and me had gotten frosty as well. The exciting energy was gone. Any kind of sexual chemistry that was crackling the night before had vaporized too. The conversation felt so stiff and awkward and shallow. I was a ball of tension wrapped up in self-consciousness. My thoughts were all over the place. What I didn't realize at that time was that I'd shifted gears. No longer bold and open to possibility, I was now playing defense. Instead of continuing in the mindset and flow that allowed me to have this opportunity in the first place, I was now struggling to make sure I quote, got this right. And this meant my head shot firmly up my ass, full of worries about how to act so that I didn't do anything that might rock the boat. All of this taking things so seriously meant I wasn't having fun anymore. Instead, I was feeling trapped because I believed everything I said or did was a big deal that might screw up my opportunity. I felt drained because the conversation was so boring. I definitely felt stressed because I believed the stakes were high. And even though we were physically in the same space together, I most certainly didn't feel connected to Allison. I didn't know what to do. I didn't even know what I wanted other than some relief from the pressure of trying to not screw this up. I wasn't leading, I was just hoping some magical dude fairy would come along and tell me what to do. Now, because I was so focused on myself and trying to get it right, I didn't realize that all of this awkwardness was completely obvious to Allison. I had no idea that instead of helping things get stronger, all of my efforts to play it safe were actually making things worse. And I was about to find out how much this was driving her nuts too. So. 
We shuffled across the icy sidewalk and went into a Starbucks. The place was packed. She ordered some kind of a foamy chai latte with cruelty-free dick sprinkles, and I was over here just trying to be Mr. Cool. The barista handed her the drink, and in the next few seconds, my life changed forever. Like an action hero in slow motion, Allison swiftly pivoted to aim the lid of the cup right at my center mass. Simultaneously, her other hand swung upward and popped the bottom of the cup to send a giant stream of 2% soy vegan dick sprinkled chai latte foam all over me. Head to toe, right there, in front of everybody. For a few seconds, I was in shock. Time stood still. Even that nauseating Starbucks music seemed to go silent. My brain struggled to recalibrate. First of all, that was an amazing shot. Does she go to a gun range to practice this? I looked up from my foam-covered body and saw Allison's devilish smile. And that's when I dropped the good guy facade. It was on. Like a panther, a soggy, chai-covered war panther, I panther-pounced through the crowd over to that counter where all of the condiments are and unleashed a torrent of sugar packets down upon her. Without hesitation, she returned fire with another stream of foam accompanied with a squeal of delight. But before she could take cover, she was pummeled by my Bruce Lee-inspired hellfire of coffee stir stick daggers. What a we laughed and yelled and ran around the tables full of serious people and their laptops. Stuff was flying everywhere. Mouths open. People stared at us like we were nuts. Collateral damage? I'm sure we lost a few good customers that day. We ran out the door gasping, and in that moment of watching my breath turn to vapor, I felt alive again. I felt like me again. I wasn't playing it safe anymore. I wasn't feeling stressed or drained or trapped anymore. I was playing. I was feeling free and alive and way more connected to Allison. And it wouldn't occur to me until later that Allison's bold, risky action saved our relationship from a dismal, boring, day-date demise. Without that shootout in Starbucks, we wouldn't have gotten married. We wouldn't have our daughter, and we wouldn't have all of the joy that we share today. I hope you've enjoyed this excerpt from my new book, This Book Will Make You Dangerous. If you'd like to learn more about the book, then just visit DangerousBookstore.com. Thanks for listening.